Hey everybody, while I was working on next week's Glass of Water script, I had Jello Apocalypse's Reviewed in 10 Words or Less series running in the background, and after I finished the most recent one about Pixar, I thought, you know what, that looks like it'd be fun, let's do one of those. So because I hate myself and secretly yearn for death, we're going to run through every single episode of French Biz Magic, plus the movies, in 10 words or less. Just like with Jello Apocalypse, scores range from 10 to negative 10, with 10 being the best episodes with the best themes, writing, and morals, negative 10 being the most enjoyably bad episodes, and zero being either the most boring, the most creatively bankrupt, or the most toxic moral the showrunners could be teaching to kids, aka the worst episodes, because an episode that might make bronies cry is just better than one that fucks up your kids. So without any further ado, here is every episode of Friendship is Magic reviewed in 10 words or less. Summon the rainbow, taste the rainbow. Well, I hope you brought enough for everyone, Twilight. Applejack needs to kick back and have a nap. The best lesson that the writers are trying to erase. Being arrogant is the worst thing in the world, apparently. Fluttershy needs to be on meds, part one. Would Rarity and Applejack just fuck already? Sometimes even bronies can be totally, totally right. Don't use magic to solve your problems, part one. Without leadership, the peasants will doom us all. I know you really want a tramp stamp, but no. Would Rainbow Dash and Applejack just fuck already? Dragging out, dragging up the song. Twilight, let Pinky have her delusions in peace. Rarity's ego saves the day. This episode was an omen to terrible brony memes. But it's cringe comedy. Grow the fuck up. Rarity's a fucking troll and it's great. Actually, it turns out green is your color. Who knew? Any other visual aesthetic and this would have been great. Celestia, your bird died. Don't worry, she got better. The pillars were foreshadowed, but we didn't listen. You wanna boop the hoot? Watching Pinky have a psychotic breakdown shouldn't be this funny. It's not the worst episode ever. Eternal chaos comes with brony memes, you guys. Brony memes! Twilight's hi, girls scene was rather accurate for the fandom. The writers wrote the words Luna episode and then just went home. Rarity's parents are negligent bastards. What was the lesson supposed to be again? The tortoise and the mare. Rainbow's friends are savage af. Fancy Pants is so chill. Look, it's the Wonderbolt! Splat! Be nice or the Wendigos will get you. You know, my grandma could totally beat up your grandma. It's the Baboos! Must protect! It's a solid Applejack episode and nothing else. Fuck capitalism, let's take society back for the people, comrades! Rainbow Dash is insecure, have we made that clear yet? No wonder you three get D's and everything. If this were real life, Pinky would be arrested. Fluttershy does something mean and bronies throw a tantrum. The gates of what? Let boys be feminine, damn it! Fluttershy needs to be on meds, part two. How not to brony. This episode is gay baiting Twipie. Curse you, Stephen Moffat! Second best bug. A constant ramp up of tension and suspense. Good shit, there is no such thing. Bad seed, bad seed, what we gonna do? Puncher. The way this show treats Trixie is kind of gross. So Luna shows up and- <laughs> The Wonderbolts are the worst military force in the world. If you assholes say racist barn one more fucking time. But it's so cringy. Crow the fuck up. Fluttershy gets a kinky boyfriend. I should not enjoy watching a child suffer this much. Solid episode, but the very worst one to start with. A true, true brony balls his eyes right out. Twilight gets a boyfriend and all the bronies cry. But seeing Twilight suffer brings me so much joy. It was t at the end, you dense motherfuckers. Your heroes aren't real, kids. Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon are absolute fucking monsters. The writers actively contrive reasons for magic to not work. For such a savvy business pony, Rarity sure is a sucker. The song's overrated, it's not that good. Why does Rainbow want to join the Wonderbolts again? Cadence is an adrenaline junkie and it's great. Pinky overreacts to being upstaged for half an hour. Rarity overreacts to being rejected for half an hour. Would someone take this fucking woman to a fucking doctor? Wanna watch me ruin this episode for everybody? Glad to see the meds are working, Shy. If your parents are overprotective, prove them right. She's not like Raven, you stupid pieces of- So then Luna shows up and- <laughs> Literal snake oil salesman. Hammer mare, hammer, hammer mare, hammer, hammer mare, hammer. Don't sell your friends. Didn't think that needed clarifying, honestly. Don't make a deal with Sargeras. But the song is so cringy. Oh, can you just not? Apparently bronies still like Dragon Ball. That's kind of sad. Best villain, hands down. Because sometimes you just can't give your kids sleeping pills. Would Fluttershy and Twilight just fuck already? So then Luna... <laughs> say a prayer, but let the good times roll. The CMC befriend a shady stranger. 
No, seriously. Fluttershy's out on a date with her dealer. Discord's mad. Ending a bad friendship is bad. Shame on you. Does anyone else miss clip shows? But it's so... Oh my god, why are you here? Equestria is visited by Americans. Let's see how far we've come. You can just talk the depression out of someone, apparently. Rarity's marketing works wonders, and that's terrible. This is so stupid, and I love it. We conclude this marathon of fabulous with... Um... Sorry. <laughs> oh, God. Wow, what a fucking waste, you assholes. Ishibabu! Don't tell anyone or you're a monster. Marble's the most popular. I can't imagine why. Okay, who gave Fluttershy the right to be this awesome? I had to leave. They were having fun wrong. Won't someone please think of the aminals? Hasbro hates people with epilepsy. The media really needs to stop glorifying mass shooters. Okay, what the fuck did I just say? Ishibabu! And she did a deadly sneeze. Would Rarity and Maud just fuck already? I ain't some tip-tapping little tater tot any... Wait. The word Sundre needs to die. Trixie has to be black. That's the only explanation. Go back to your safe space, Snowflake. Fuck off. So Luna starts singing at... <laughs> We're Rarity's friends, and this is Jackass. Applejack, you have a problem and you need an intervention. If you think this is about millennials, you're fucking stupid. Critics are jerks. Fuck off. This episode's biggest sin is reminding us that BronyCon exists. Telling your mother to shut up is good for you. But it's just a rehash of- Fuck off! This episode was boring to racists and nobody else. See, they can kick the creep out immediately. Lazy bastards. Sometimes you just have to roar at a bitch. Why can't non-ponies get cutie marks? Fluttershy's a little shit and it's great. Aw, Starlight get away with it and learn nothing. Everyone's a liar and it's great. Awkward teenage apple horse. This is what Newbie Dash should have been. I still haven't bothered to watch this one. This has aged extremely well. You've raised my hopes and dashed them quite expertly, ma'am. Seeing Starlight suffer strokes a sensitive section of my soul. It's your babu. And she's babu and all over the place. Pinky, do you really have to ship right now? Fluttershy got a smack a bitch, volume 13. Why was Sweetie Belle not Rarity's daughter? Fucking hell, you had one fucking job, writers. Will you go out with me? Not that fucking hard. Every opinion is valid. You're wrong. You can't say that. So Evil Celestia shows up at- <laughs> The Yaks are every comedian's wife ever. Fluttershy wants her kinky boyfriend back. We confirmed your headcanon. Will you stop bitching now? Nice to know I'm living rent-free in Hasbro's head. Is it just me or is Spike kinda racist? It's not an episode. It's not me. You're all just snowflakes. Stop laughing. Uh, no, she's not. I spent the whole episode waiting for punk rarity. Lore used properly for the first time ever. Starlight is a toxic influence on children. The baboos building a tower out of utter baboos. There are so many dirty jokes here. This episode just perpetuates the stereotype that Starlight is likable. Seriously, the media really needs to stop glorifying mass shooters. Seriously, stop doing it! Somebody stop them! They're on a path of self-destruction! And that's all of them. Now, you don't want to go back to see what scored the highest, so here's the top and bottom five. Bear in mind that when Friendship is Magic ends, I intend to update the top ten and bottom ten episodes videos with more in-depth critique, so don't take this particular list as gospel. Number five, Griffin the Brush Off. Probably the only episode that the writers have been actively trying to scrub from existence, Griffin Griffin the Brush Off teaches a very important lesson to children that is often completely overlooked. It's very important to recognize when a friend has become a toxic influence and end the friendship, something many people, bronies especially, are terrified to do because they think that means they've failed in some way. Some people sincerely believe that there's no difference too great that you can't stay friends with someone, but many things are. If that person is a douche to your other friends, if that person is a bully or abuser, if that person espouses political views that actively threaten your life, the list of reasons to cut your friendship off with someone goes on and on and on, and the writers have been avoiding it in recent recent years to chase the idea that friendship should never end, which is just... Hiss. Number four, a flurry of emotions. Bronies have some kind of violent hatred of children, and I never understood why. An entire episode of Flurry Heart spending quality time with their auntie Twiley is just a wonderfully adorable experience. An episode centered entirely around Dababo being precious and adorable is just a fun time for everyone involved. Number three, a health of information. Still the only episode where lore isn't used in the worst possible way to appease an idiot fanbase, a health of information shows exactly how to use legends and world building properly to serve the story, coupled with a wonderful message about the importance of taking care of yourself so that you can more appropriately take care of others. Number two, Brotherhood Social. <laughs> yeah, so this episode is really sweet, and it just 
I, I just can't right now. Number one, it ain't easy being breezies. Still the reigning champion, it ain't easy being breezies offers a rare look into the nuances of kindness and how simply being nice and placating people can often be the worst decision, and knowing when to bitch slap someone for their own good is an extremely valuable lesson that a lot of people seem unwilling to learn. These are the kind of episodes that can truly enrich the lives of the children watching them and make a series memorable. But that's enough positivity, you want to know what the worst episodes are, don't you? Yeah, I bet you do, you cynicism hungry little. So here are the five worst episodes of Friendship is Magic. Number five, Slice of Life. Slice of Life is an aimless waste of time intended for the kind of people who obsess over the background ponies. I've said before how much of the fanbase just wants Friendship is Magic to be as contextless and malleable as possible to create a sandbox for fan works, and this attitude is precisely why the background ponies are so popular in the first place. Slice of Life is a lazy, cynical, meme-filled piece of garbage that has nothing to offer anybody who doesn't have an inflated opinion of the fandom. Number four, Every Lazy Villain Redemption. The way Friendship is Magic writes villains post Rainbow Rocks has always been the single most disgustingly lazy aspect of the series made out of a sincere and incorrect belief that nobody's bad, they're just broken. Friendship is Magic is completely averse to the idea of meaningful consequences, and everyone's expected to sympathize with the next mass murderer just because they're sad, in an extremely depressing mirror to the way the media treats these exact kind of people in real life. Number three, do princesses dream of magic sheep? Friendship is Magic always seems to over-exaggerate a character's flaws to the point that they become destructive, unhealthy, and eerily similar to untreated mental illnesses. Unfortunately, they don't don't take the next step and just let it sit there. Do Princess's Dream of Magic Sheep is the nadir of this laziness, having Twilight just say, hey, don't be depressed, Luna, and that magically cures Luna's depression. Again, another thing people try to do to mentally ill people in real life and are surprised when it doesn't work. Number two, parental guidance. Teaching children to put up with abuse from their parents is a fucking horrible thing to do, and frankly, what children really need is to be taught to stand up to bad, destructive, and ego-driven parenting tactics instead. In any sane world, Rainbow would have cracked both her parents over the back of the head with her hoof and told them to rein their shit in or fuck off forever. And the fact that the episode went the opposite direction with that is fucking shameful. Number one, Newbie Dash. Take parental guidance and add a fresh dose of conservative snowflake rhetoric and you've got a recipe for a shovel in the face. If the Wonderbolts are supposed to be a military force, then the showrunners have an extremely negative view of the military. The fact that Rainbow Dash looks up to these anti-social chest-beating malcontents is pathetic, and in any sane world, Spitfire would have been wearing her ass as a hat for her disgraceful behavior. Rainbow doesn't need this shit, she's better than all of them combined. Bye!